Hi team. All right, today what we're going to look at is we're going to look at extended ways of filtering objects uh, from your model using your external bombs. Okay, so as we all know, in the bomb editor, we can define at any bomb, at any level, we can define the report contents, which filters out the types of objects that you want to um, report on. Okay. Um, so in the this particular case, I have three lots of plates, okay, and I've color coded them accordingly just so that you can see the difference. So you can see here, part number one thousand and one has no predefined remark, but part number uh, one thousand two and one thousand three both have a denotion one attached as a demarcation for these objects. So one of the things that we can do um, to filter on these reports is actually apply what's called an XSLT file to our report. And this is, this is not a special Autodesk technology. This is something that's related back to Microsoft in the way of XML files. It's a way of reorganizing, filtering or re-injecting data by taking an existing XML file and creating a new one. So technically when we create a, a bomb or a report from Advanced Deal, uh, it creates an XML file. The XML file gets passed to our processing engine, which then creates the report for us. So if, for example, I wanted to filter out um, only the plates that have the denotion on them, I can add an XSLT file to my uh, report. So in this particular case, if we go and create a new data extraction, okay, so if I go next, and let's call this plate, plates new, just because I've done this a few times already. <clears throat> okay, so it extracts the data. And if we come in and select our plate report and hit use and use our plates new, Click OK. You can see I get three plates, okay, as expected. Now, what if I want only the plates that have got Denotion 1 attached to them? Well, I have a copy of the plate report, and attached to this plate report is an XSL file called only include parts with Denotion 1, okay? And for those of you who are interested, you can see here. Here's the sample for um, extracting that data. Again, don't worry about it. Um, it's a web developer's problem, not your problem. Um, pick OK. Now, if I use this particular report and pick the same XML file, you can see I only get those two plates. Now, this can be extended further. So if we leave this report, escape, and for argument's sakes, we create, oops, let's say we create a, an XML file including these bolts. Now for your particular interest, the magenta bolts don't have a denotion and the cyan bolts do. So again, if we create a new XML file and we'll call this plates and beams, create a report, create a list. <clears throat> And we come in and produce a uh, bolts list based on uh, here, based on that particular XML file. Pick OK. You can see that we get 14 bolts, which in reality is correct because we're filtering just bolts. We've got 14 bolts there, so we've got 14 bolts in our report. Now, of course, again, if I scroll down a bit, I have a predefined report here. So I have a particular bolt list, and the bolt list has, again, an XSLT file attached to it, which filters particular bolts out. <clears throat> I pick OK, run the report, and pick my XML file, pick OK, and you can see I only get the 10 bolts, which were marked with a demarcation. Which is cool, right? Um, 
The XSLT file can also be used for filtering down to a smaller granular level. So for example, I have an I-beam and a purlin here, so a UB and a purlin. So let's say we create a, <coughs> a, um, a data extraction from this, and we'll call this beams, plates, underscore data, just to make sure it's something different. Now again, if we come back to our standard beam report and hit use, you can see we get the exact beams that we selected. Makes sense, right? Exactly what is expected. Now, if we come down further here and we go to our, let's say, Perlins only. Actually, let me just change this here, make sure this reports back to name. And save. So if we look at this particular report and look at the report contents, you can see it's producing straight beams. But we also have attached to this one an XSL file, which is actually delivered as part of the build for 2018 and 2017. Pick OK and we hit use. And we pick our XML file, pick OK. And you can see we get just the Z pearl because that XSLT file is filtering out the objects at a part level based on their catalog of where they came from. Now, another common request that I often get is I want to reuse my uh, project data at a detail level. Okay, so for example, some people like to not produce any headings not not produce any of the report header details <clears throat> just produce a report with these lines of information and then export them out as a csv file so you've got none of the um, extra data so what i've done here is i've created user attribute one user attribute two you can see over here user attribute three and just a few other columns just to give me some information now before i run the report I'm just going to confirm to you that if you look in here under the user attributes, it's empty. <clears throat> and you look at this one, look at the user attributes again, it's empty. So if we go back to our bomb editor, again, this particular template itself has a XSLT file attached to it. Okay. And this particular file will take this data and allow me to reuse it at the detail level. So if I go ahead and use my beams, beams plates data new XML file, which we remember had the two beams in it, and pick OK, you'll notice that my project data is being duplicated at different levels down here. Okay, Again, giving me more ability to reuse data everywhere. So the examples here were to show the fact that I can filter and change the location of data or inject data into my XML file, giving my reporting a greater functionality and greater ability to uh, report exactly what it is that I need. All right, thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, leave comments and feedback down the bottom if, if, if you so need to. Bye.